Let's be clear, I'm not calling for an immediate direct entry scheme into policing and I'm not saying that any old manager from any old business could step into policing without a day's training and do the job that some of our police leaders do because those jobs call for a high degree of skill. What I am saying is that it's time to move the debate on. Firstly, we should change the assumption before people have been able to say it's up to others to prove that this can work. I think we, what we should now say is now it's up for us to prove that it can't. And the best way we can prove that this can't work is to improve, introduce one or two pilot schemes to test out the concept of direct entry, where people are brought into policing and given uh, a proper and structured training programme and development programme that will introduce them to command and operational command whilst benefiting from the sort of skills that people from other sectors may have to offer. I think that um, if we were designing policing from scratch we wouldn't design a system where the only way to the top is through a single route, we wouldn't design a system where police staff in police forces regularly find themselves with nowhere to go in spite of the fact that they have skills and can contribute more. We wouldn't design a system in which we have a huge concentration of skills around operational command, but we lack skills and we, we lack additional experiences in the senior echelons of policing that people from different backgrounds can bring. And we shouldn't, certainly wouldn't design a system in policing where the diversity of police leadership does not reflect the diversity of the population that we're trying to serve. Okay. Um, firstly, I speak uh, r rather strangely, uniquely as a British police chief. I'm the only serving chief constable of the Home Office Police Force who's been through Sam Hurston as being an, uh, an officer in the British Army. So I do speak from a position as I do understand the military background as well as the police. I say that because a lot of the conversation about direct entry appears for some reason to be linked to, well, we could bring people in for the military to do this because they deal with high-risk operational matters. So that, I merely say that by way of introduction. Why am I opposed or what I, I'm feeling uneasy about the intention of, of direct entry? First, I would say that I'm not, no one's against it. In, in the debate today, there's a recognition within the whole room that the police service needs to change and adapt to different uh, environments it's operating in now. We recognise that. The debate now is about how do you affect that. The majority of us, and I include myself in that number, really do value part of the unique element of British policing is that the leadership has come off the shop floor. We've all joined the street cops and we've all made our way through by different routes and at different speeds into positions of leadership within the service. It means that we do understand and can empathise with the workforce and being able to go out and visit cops and talk to them and understand what it feels like at three o'clock in the morning when you're outnumbered, cold, wet uh, and really challenged and a bit frightened perhaps. It really does help you understand how to manage the business. It also applies in moments of crisis and I know it doesn't happen very often that chief constables are called upon to do it. But having been the gold commander in Peenic during the recent disorder nationally, I was speaking personally on the telephone to chief constables and big forces who were in their gold command rooms taking an operational command role in regard of massive challenge to British policing that we confronted during that week of madness in August this year of the massive disorder. So that was police officers who, yes, a lot of our time is not operational. It's dealing with high-level finance strategic issues. So the skills, the business skills and acumen is important to us but actually they also have the ability to drop at a moment's notice into a command role that is the essence of British policing it's something I think we value so if we're going to have a debate about changing that let's have a debate from the position be clear why you're doing it what process do you wish to use and what people you're actually targeting rather than simply what I hear at the minute is that British police leadership is stagnant it needs freshening up, it needs new blood. It's all very judgmental language, but I've yet to hear what's the problem they're trying to solve. So professionally, I think we can legitimately ask those questions. What do you want to do? And then we should be allow our, our, draw on our professional, business, uh, professional experience over many years about what, we, what, we, what serves us best about British Police and what we want to retain about its particular style of leadership. A legitimate request and a legitimate debate.